When Father Hamilton said earlier this week that he can sing the exalted, that opening song, exalt, let them exalt, I was very, very happy that he agreed to do so because I have quite a story about the exalted. See, in the seminary, the exalted is like the big thing. Like your, your whole reputation is on the line. So when you become a deacon, you have the privilege of singing the exalted at the cathedral for the Easter vigil, as Deacon Raphael is doing right now. So it's a huge deal. And usually you prepare for many months. And my singing is like no bueno. So I asked um, Father Abbott if he could give me lessons. So he said, if you train for three months, you're going to get it. You'll be good. And then COVID hit, and so I was like, I don't think I'm going to be at the cathedral. So I'm like, I don't even like singing, and just take a break. And then about a week or two before, I was like, actually, you'll be singing the Exalted. So I kind of freaked out, and uh, I reached out to one of the monks at the Abbey, Father Pryor, and I said, can you just like record yourself singing the Exalted so I can practice along like every day leading up to the Easter Vigil? And so uh, the day of the Easter Vigil, I came up with this genius idea that because it's all dark, I'm just going to put an earbud in my phone, and I'm going to press, press play on my phone, and then I'll have Father Pryor singing the beautiful exaltet, and I'll just sing along, and it must work out well. So I did it, and I thought it went well, and, but I didn't get any response from any of the guys after, so I'm like driving back home, and I was you know, full of joy from... The Easter Vigil is an amazing thing. And right before bed, I was like, oh, let me just look at YouTube and see how I did. Oh, I was just like so full of shame hearing my voice for the Exalted. Because you just want to do justice for this song. It's so beautiful. And I felt like I just failed. And as a perfectionist, it was just magnified the sense of shame. And so I went to bed, it was just like, I went from the resurrection back into the tomb. And I was just like, overwhelmed with a sense of shame, slept horrible, woke up early, trying to pray, and I just kept going back and back to the shame of failing at the exalted. And so I decided to switch it up, I'm like, looking on YouTube, trying to find some Eastern music to lift up my spirits. And I found this one song. It's from Bethel Music. It's called Ain't No Grave. And the first words of this song says, O oh, shame is a prison as cruel as a grave. O oh, shame is a prison as cruel as a grave. And I felt like God was speaking directly to me in this moment. Like I felt the shame as this prison, cruel as a grave. I felt like I went from the resurrection back into this grave. And so I was, I was just living in this shame, and I felt like God was speaking directly to me. And so I was thinking, this must be what the disciples felt as well Easter morning. You know, it's Easter morning for them, and all of them must have just felt a sense of shame. Like all of them left their Savior, their best friend, in his time of just agony and they promised they'd be with him, and they ran away. And so I was, as well, kind of commiserating with the disciples as though here I am, Easter morning, just feeling a sense of shame. Last week, there's a famous YouTuber. His name is Mr. Beast. Comes out with these ridiculous videos. And he had this video last week. He says... Uh, it's, I was buried alive for 50 hours. So I was thinking, and it got 57 million views. They watched this documentary of this guy being buried in a grave for 50 hours, 57 million views. And I was, I was reflecting upon my exalted experience of shame, feeling like I went back into the grave just hearing the, the, you know, people's stories as a priest, I feel like so much of us, we actually, we all live in like a grave so often in our lives. You know what, you could ask yourself this question, like what is the grave that I so often enter back into? 
For me, at singing the Exalted, it was shame. I, as a perfectionist, I felt such shame that on Easter morning, I was just like immersed in a sense of failure that I couldn't live up to the standard I set for myself. You could ask yourself, what are the graves that I can so easily go into? Maybe it's a certain relationship. Maybe you actually thought that this person is like dead to you. Like you've cut off all communication and this person, you've dug the grave for them and you're like, they're out of my life and that's it. Or maybe it's a certain sin. You just feel like you can't get rid of a certain sin and this is just a grave that you enter back into again and again and again. You pile all the dirt over yourself and you're just in darkness. Maybe it's an attachment that you tried to get rid of over Easter and you feel like there's no hope. You've tried everything and you can't imagine what life could actually be like free from a certain addiction. Well, I'm here to proclaim that on Easter, the power of the resurrection is not something that just happened 2,000 years ago. It's not something we just hope we might experience when we die. It's a power that should be at work in all of our lives today. The power of the resurrection is meant to be a daily experience in our lives, bringing us up out of the grave. Not just bringing us up out of the grave, but allowing us to have victory over the grave, to experience the joy of the freedom of God's beloved children. We heard in the Old Testament today that God prophesied that he would wipe away all sin in our lives. And Jesus abundantly, extravagantly, over the top, is able to give us all the power we could have possibly imagine to be set free from all sin, from all shame, from all addictions, from all broken relationships. The power of the resurrection is meant to be a power that you experience every single day. And so I was asking myself before Mass, okay, I, I want, like, I want to experience it every day. I don't just want to preach about it. I want to experience the power of the resurrection every single day. And so I was going through the readings, and it was like, St. Paul said in the epistle, if you've been baptized into Christ, you've already died with him and been raised with him. If you've been baptized, you've already experienced the full power of Christ's resurrection. So often we forget. Do you, do you, can you actually live being like, I've already died. That's why St. Paul says you can be set free from sin because you said, I've already died in Christ. I belong fully to him. I'm alive in God. I've risen with him already. I don't need to be attached to any of these things. Today we heard confessions for three and a half hours. And I was just imagining that when people walk into the confessional, there's like this grave. And it's like when they come in, they place themselves and all of their sins in the grave. They bury themselves. They unveil it all. And then the same God in the first reading who spoke and, and created everything uses priests, Father Hamilton, myself, to speak a word that sets people free and brings them back to life. I felt like every person that came in, we had 66 come in today for confession, over three and a half hours. I felt like every person there was going through a resurrection experience. That's what we're meant to experience when we go to confession. Going to confession is like I am walking into the grave and Christ is giving me new life. I am rising from the dead. And one of the beautiful things is that the first thing Jesus gave the apostles after he's raised from the dead, the first thing he gave them was the power to forgive sins. These were men living in so much shame and fear 
of what happened. Shame for abandoning Jesus, fear for possibly the persecution that they would have to endure. And what did Jesus do? He went beyond the walls and he gave them the power to forgive sins. And so if you want to experience the power of the resurrection, that's what Jesus wanted for the apostles. That's why he gave them that power right away so that we could experience being set free, rising from the grave that we so often enter back into. And what did Jesus give the apostles right before he went through his passion? What did he set up? The Eucharist, Mass. He said, do this in memory of me. And so every single Mass, when we receive Holy Communion, you're not receiving bread. You are receiving the risen Christ. Have you ever thought about that? I'm receiving the risen Christ every time I receive Holy Communion. It's like the grave of your heart so easily turned to darkness. Jesus enters in and he wants to bring new life. So often though we go to confession, we receive communion, but we feel like nothing's happening. I encourage you to go to confession, receive Holy Communion, expecting to be risen from the dead. Expect that the risen Christ will change your life every time you go to confession, every time you receive Holy Communion. Jesus rose from the dead so that not only we would experience the resurrection of the dead when we die, but that we would experience it today. Father Hamilton and I desire with our whole heart, our whole lives, to live in the confessional, to celebrate Mass, so that we can give you an experience of the resurrection. Because all of us, myself included, so easily go back into the grave, whatever darkness we can so easily enter into. But the power of Easter, the power of Christ's resurrection, is for you and me to experience today. Jesus is risen from the dead. He wants to give your life back. He wants to give you new life. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.